Wow. It's so great to be here again. I love this place, the National Liberty Museum. I think it represents the best of who we are as a nation. And you, my friends, represent some of the best that we have in this city, doing remarkable things in the greater Delaware Valley. The National Liberty Museum, TD Bank, and our amazing, incredible group of young people making such a great difference. And the family and friends who are your support as well. We want to thank you for coming. You'll hear so much today from these amazing people. And I have to say, just veering a little from the script, that these days, sometimes it seems as though we are living in dark times. We often see through social media, through media reports about all the tough things, the rough things, the dark things that are happening in the world. Well, I don't happen to see the world that way, and you're the reason why. It's because of you that I have great hope for our future. You are the people who will be shaping the future of this country, and we thank you and we honor you today for being the extraordinary people that you are. We have shout out TD Bank, which year after year supports this remarkable project. They truly believe in you, and they are proving that by being a great supporter of this event. We have some great keynotes, Alexa Grabel and special guest Alexis Werner, who was honored herself several years ago. I was there when she was receiving her award. Their ongoing work since winning the award will show you today that today is just the beginning of many adventures for all of our young heroes. We will begin this program by calling the students up to the stage one at a time as we share with you their young hero stories. But first, it's my tremendous pleasure to introduce to you Gwen Borowski, CEO of the National Liberty Museum, to begin today's program. Lorraine, and thank you again so much for being with us again. Um, we kind of wrote the same remarks, too, because, well, first of all, welcome. We're so happy to have you here. This is really one of my favorite So welcome. And this is our 16th year. So we opened in 2000, and since that time, we have been honoring young people who have brought about positive change to their schools and communities and globally through civic engagement, peaceful conflict resolution, diversity, and school and civic leadership since 2000. So as Lorraine said, and, and everybody here knows, we live in really troubling times with violence and bigotry exploding all around us and really unprecedented hate and incivility in public life. The actions of the 2016 Young Heroes are really more important today than ever. I really wish everyone who reads and watches the terrible news could be with us today, because they, like us, can be so inspired hearing the stories that we're about to hear. The projects the Young Heroes carried out in their schools and communities this year address critically important issues and are just so sorely needed in our troubled world. Their actions embody what we teach at the museum every day. We show what it means to live in a democracy and we remind visitors that we each play a role in keeping that safe and strong. And the way we do this is by telling and showing the stories of heroes men, women, and young people of every background, every nationality, every religion, and every age. Some are world famous, and if you walked around the museum, you saw that. Others unknown, but all did something extraordinary to help break down the barriers of prejudice and violence to preserve liberty. Through those empowering stories, young visitors learn very quickly that every person can make a difference. Now, I know the students we are honoring here today already know that, and they understand it. So you, young heroes, really deserve recognition for the wonderful things you do to make your schools and communities a better place. 
Because you take your idealism and you put it into action. And by doing so, you inspire all of us to do better and to do more. And to the adults, you're our heroes too. These young people would not be who they are without you and their lives, teaching them and guiding them. So I think all of you deserve a round of applause. recognize and thank TV Bank for their generous sponsorship of today's recognition program and exhibit. You heard me say that this is our 16th year of honoring young people in the community, and TV Bank has supported us all those years. We are so grateful for TV Bank's generous and consistent support. And I'll go off script a little because Tom Shoemaker reminded the who you will meet, reminded me that those 16 years have not always been so easy for the banking business, and they continue to be tough. And not once did they or their support waver. They have stood with us, and we are so very grateful for that. So we're delighted to have the following people from TD Bank with us today. Tom Shoemaker, Commercial Market President, and Maria Carrello. Retail Market Manager, Michael McFarland, Regional Vice President, and Michael Snyder, Field Marketing Manager. Now, can we ask you all to stand up? So we can and now, I'd like to welcome Michael McFarland, who's the Regional VP for TV Bank, to the stage to help introduce the honor. And now we begin. Will Kevin Perry Jr. please join me? We're saying the word stage, but the stage is up there. This is the stage. So will Kevin Perry Jr. please join me in the front? teacher, Sheila Myers, who says she won't know what to do without him. <laughs> Miss Myers witnesses Kevin's many acts of bravery and kindness every day in her classroom. She says Kevin is one of the most remarkable students she has ever taught, and from her stories, we can see why. When two students were having a conflict one day, Kevin could see that it was escalating. He knew he wanted to turn it around, so in a situation where many people were unsure what to do, Kevin intervened. He tried to reason with the two students to de-escalate the conflict, and when his attempts were not successful, Kevin courageously tried to separate the students when they began to hurt <coughs> each other. Miss Myers says Kevin routinely de-escalates conflicts in the classroom. Kevin knows his classmates struggle in more ways than one. In addition to helping to resolve conflicts when he can, he spends his morning answering questions other students have about their homework before class begins, and he's often found explaining yesterday's math lesson to a teacher who was absent from school. <laughs> he knows that if a student misses his <laughs> information, they can fall behind quickly. So Kevin will even intervene in class if he thinks of a more kid-friendly way that his teacher could to explain something. Miss Myers recognizes Kevin as accountable, trustworthy, considerate, helpful, organized, inquisitive, honest, loyal, and witty. And those are her words. Through his character, Kevin is inspiring other children and removing everyday obstacles in one of the most impoverished communities in Philadelphia. 
Kevin, you are extraordinary. Thank you for everything. She asked her mother if she could give the woman some money to help her get something to eat. Ella's mother asked if she could go further and think of other ways to help besides just giving spare change. After the hospital vi visit, Ella reached out to her family and friends. She asked them to help her gather supplies for Morgan, including gloves, hats, scarves, socks, blankets, toiletries, food, and even dog food from Morgan's friend. Every week for the next four months, Ella brought a care package with her when she came to the hospital. She was there to be treated for a lifelong, life-threatening genetic disorder called neurofibromatosis, or NF, which causes tumors to grow. Ella was facing, facing her first chemotherapy treatment in December 2012, when she met her friend Morgan outside the hospital. As she continued to bring care packages for Morgan, she made more friends near the hospital because whenever Morgan wasn't, wasn't there, Ella would give the care package to someone else in the area who was homeless. That's just the way Ella is. Even though her illness causes her problems, such as partial vision loss, ADHD, low muscle tone, and poor coordination, it doesn't seem to limit her ability to do for others. Ella has created an event called Loving Your Noggin, where volunteers make hats and headbands for kids who are losing their hair due to medical treatment. It's, we're not done yet. She also volunteers at animal shelters, donates toys to hospitals, and has raised over $40,000 for NF research. She even leaves money at gas pumps and laundromats, knowing it could help a stranger out when they come up short. Ella inspires everyone who knows her as she sings and dances through the halls of the hospital, bringing treats for nurses and doctors and comforting other young patients. Her family's Facebook page, Hope for Ella, raises awareness and funds for NF research. Ella, we are just so inspired by you, your generosity, your spirit, and all your great ideas. Keep it up. We love you. Yeah. What a gift. What a 
Bethany Custer. Please join me up in the front. has completed the fourth grade, and oh, we have such wonderful young, young heroes today. The fourth grade at Wind Gap Middle School. She was nominated by someone in the community who admires her work, but wished to remain anonymous. Bethany started her career in volunteerism by noticing the things she enjoyed most were not available to everyone. Owning something that belongs just to you, it's a special feeling for most kids. When Bethany was nine, she learned that not all children own crayons. That was upsetting. Crayons were one of Bethany's favorite things. But it was more than that. Bethany knew that crayons and art in general can help you express yourself. And she knew that all kids need to express themselves. So Bethany enlisted the help of her brothers and started a charity organization called Color for Kids. She personally visits schools in impoverished communities and delivers crayons and other art supplies which she has collected through donations. This formerly very small classroom project has grown worldwide and has inspired partner schools and even a university to get involved. Bethany recently spoke to the faculty <laughs> at East Stroudsburg University about how to use the Color for Kids model to do service learning projects with her own students. Wow. To date, Bethany has given out 50,000 crowns mm -hmm. to 2,000 kids. She says she wants to keep going until every kid has their own box of crowns. Right. I just want to remind you, fourth grade, <laughs> Bethany, you are amazing. Keep it up. You are so inspired, and we love you. Thank you. And now we have Anne Marie Carollo from TV Bank to present the next round of awards. script for a moment. I'm just blown away. I'm just <clears throat> inspired and you're, you're all just amazing. And there's, a thing. there's still a whole bunch more to go. This is incredible. So will Nicholas Tuchek come up? So Nicholas has completed the sixth grade in the Unionville Chads Ford School District in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. He was nominated by his peer and colleague, Alexis Warner, who first met Nick at Prudential Spirit of Community Award in Washington, D.C. three years ago. Alexis says Nick has an incredible sense of social responsibility to his community and to the world. Nick showed that this was true when he decided to follow in his father's footsteps in a unique and creative way. Nick's father is an eye doctor, and he's also an avid runner. Nick began running marathons with his dad at the age of five. At the age of nine, Nicholas started his own campaign, drawing on inspiration from his father, who he calls his best coach ever. Nick, Nick began running marathons to raise money for eye care and surgeries benefiting under, underserved youth around the world. In his campaign, Nick runs the world. Nicholas literally ran the world. He ran a marathon on each of the seven continents and was the youngest person to ever do so. Back in the US, Nicholas is embarking on a new journey to run a marathon in all 50 states. On June 28th, he finished number 12 in Hawaii. What keeps him going? Well, let's listen to this for a moment. I just say, follow your heart. Whatever you want to do, just don't be afraid. Just go out there and do it. You know, you don't have to be big to make a difference. Follow your heart. Go out there and do it.
Pastor Nicholas, you ran the world, and we can tell you're going to go further still. We're proud to present you with the Young Heroes Award. Congratulations. <laughs>
Jordan, in the way you live your life, you're setting a great example for others. We are proud to present you today with the Young Heroes Award. introduce Tom Shoemaker. Tom, your continued support for the Young Heroes Awards is truly, truly appreciated. So let's give Tom Shoemaker. Distributed over 80 
thousand books. Mm. Alexis' family realized the spark that winning the Young Heroes Award provided for their daughter when they decided to nominate their younger daughter, Jordan, this year for her own accomplishments. So they're just kind of paying it forward, which is kind of nice. When Jordan was selected, we started to talk with mom and realized that we had to share this amazing story with all of you. So please join me in welcoming Alexa Gravel to the podium to provide our keynote address. Thank you, National Liberty Museum, for inviting me to be the keynote speaker here today. I'm honored to be here celebrating with all of you. I am thrilled to be speaking to such an accomplished and inspirational group of young change makers. I want to extend my heartfelt congratulations to all the young heroes here today. I am Alexa Graybell, and I am a sophomore at Eastern Regional High School in New Jersey. Three years ago, I was in the audience as one of the National Liberty Museum's young heroes. I remember that day well and hope that you enjoyed the celebration today as much as I did a few years back. I left inspired to work even harder, and I hope to help inspire the same in you today. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? This has been my guiding principle since I first read this quote several years ago. MLK's quote most certainly applies to all the award winners today. Although I am only 15, my life experiences have taught me how fulfilling it feels when I make a positive impact on the lives of other less fortunate people. All the honorees here today have encountered an injustice and worked their hardest to find a resolution. Enjoy today and use this gathering as an opportunity to network with fellow winners. Everyone here wants to better the world, and when many peacemakers collaborate together, the impact is unending. All the young heroes being honored today got their start of spreading liberty somewhere. For me, it was in fifth grade when I was 10 when I founded a service project called Bags of Books. I became inspired to take action when I discovered the poor condition of schools and surrounding communities, such as Camden and Philadelphia, where students suffer from the summer slide because they do not have books of their own to read at home over the summer. These children lose months' worth of learning skills during the summer, putting them at a severe educational disadvantage compared to their peers in their resources. I also learned that literacy is one of the best predictors of a child's future success. Avid reading at a young age is correlated with learning growth and overall happiness. The stories children find in books help expand their imagination and the information inspire them to learn more. But a child without access to books won't have the chance to become an engaged and capable reader. 45% of children in the United States, over 32 million, live in low-income households and many have no age-appropriate books at home. The classrooms and programs they attend are significantly under-resourced, and many of their community libraries are outdated and literally dangerous. Therefore, I founded Bags of Books. Bags of Books' mission is to promote literacy by providing children from low-income neighborhoods with a bag full of free books of their choice to create their own personal home libraries, all while fostering a love of reading. Early access to books can transform children's lives. Originally, I wanted to collect a few hundred books and provide them to children in a single elementary school class in Camden. At the time that I received my Young Hero Award, I had collected 4,000 books and had no idea how big my project would become years later. I am thrilled to say that since then, Bags of Books has grown exponentially. We have collected over 80,000 books and donated them to thousands of students at schools across Philadelphia and Camden. Bags of Books has also created new and supplemented existing school and community libraries and supplied books to school programs. With the help of hundreds of volunteers, Bags of Books collects literally tons and tons of gently used books, sorts them by grade level, and distributes them in a format that enables students to choose books they enjoy. Unlike a typical book drive, we set up fun pop-up stores at schools where the children get a shopping bag or a book bag and then get to select a bag full of free books that interest them. As Bags of Books tagline says, every book counts. The frequent signs of true appreciation and gratitude, including thank you notes and hugs from affected students and teachers alike, has been such a rewarding experience for me. 
I love when a child tells me that they have shared their donated books with their siblings, cousins, and even neighbors. Many children have told me that when Bags of Books visits their school, it's their favorite day of the year. Through Bags of Books, I have discovered an entirely different perspective in life. I have learned to better appreciate what I have and be grateful for the resources provided by my community. I am so proud that Bags of Books has been able to help thousands of children and has done so with absolutely no funding, only donations in kind and the support of a local Rotary Club. Through the years, I have been honored to work with other service organizations, such as Urban Promise, Cathedral Kitchen, CHOP, and Treehouse Books. I began my partnership with Treehouse Books when I was at this event three years ago. Since then, I have donated thousands and thousands of books to them. Additionally, I have great partnerships with the University of Pennsylvania, as well as Rutgers University. I also have had the pleasure of meeting teachers and students at many schools across the region. I have particularly enjoyed the privilege of being named a young hero by the National Liberty Museum, which has enabled me to network with many other people committed to making a difference in their communities. After being named a young hero three years ago, I heard from many people who saw the exhibit at the museum about my project. One of them even contacted me and offered to have her company host an internal employee book drive. As I continued to expand the reach of my project over the past few years, I often mentioned that I was a National Liberty Museum Young Hero. This recognition greatly helped open doors for me. The Young Hero Award helped add credibility to my work and assisted me in being able to network with local community leaders. I encourage each of you who is being honored here today to continue promoting liberty and working to make a difference. Whether you continue with the project you are being recognized for today or choose to work on behalf of a different cause, remember how inspired you feel today by everyone's stories and keep that spirit alive. My goal is to expand bags and books across the country, and I have begun to make efforts to do that. I am working with a group of 183 charter schools that are nationwide, and I am very excited to work with them to bring books to children in need everywhere. I welcome anyone here today who is interested in helping collect used and new children's books to please let me know. In particular, I challenge any students or teachers here today to host a collection at your school, and I will help you arrange for a wonderful, meaningful Bags of Books distribution event. I also invite anyone here to discuss with me how rewarding it is to have your business host an internal employee book drive. It is so easy to set up, costs nothing, and makes a world of a difference. It's a win-win for everyone. So far, Philly Shipyard, Drinker Biddle and Reef, Brandywine Realty Trust, Blank Rome, and Jackson Lewis have all conducted successful book collections. Anne Frank once wrote, how wonderful it is that nobody need wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. As Anne Frank teaches us, it is never too late to start to make a difference. Before you leave the National Liberty Museum today, take time to read the captivating and moving stories of liberty throughout this beautiful museum and get inspired. While you sit here today, I urge all of you to think of ways you can make a difference in surrounding communities, just as the young heroes have. And just like them, be sure to put your ideas into action. Remember MLK Jr.'s words, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? So what are you waiting for? There's nothing holding you back. Thank you. Amazing, Alexa Graybell, doing some amazing things and uh, creating a movement. Yeah. Right. It's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> now we have a special guest. I had the opportunity to meet her. I guess it was three years ago. Three years ago, Alexis Warner. Um, everyone in that room was was very special, but there's something about Alexa that was really stood out. She was especially bright, articulate, and passionate about the, the, the issue that she was really so very committed to, and that is raising awareness about PTSD among our veterans. She was um, an honoree and a former Young Heroes Award winner. She's produced a film called Our Way Home, a documentary about the effects of post-traumatic stress on veterans returning from war. Alexis' film will be screened at the National Liberty Museum in the near future, so please stay tuned for those details. 
Alexis is here to help present the awards today because we have quite a few budding filmmakers in this group and we thought these young people might like to have some connections among themselves. So please, let's welcome Alexis Warner. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm so honored to be here today in one of the worst and most violent summers of our country's history. Um, it's really incredible to be around all the hope that everyone in this room brings, so thank you for that. Um, will Anaya Wolf join me on stage? So, Anaya has just completed the eighth grade at the High School for Performing Arts in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, so congratulations on that. films about the issues that she sees affecting her generation, including bullying, sexual abuse, and teen pregnancy. Her short film, Skin, has been watched over 7,000 times on YouTube, and Anaya recently ran a Kickstarter crowdfunding campaign, which raised $9,000 to turn her short film into a feature film. Let's watch a clip. We're really looking forward to seeing that film, and I hope that uh, all of you will be here to, uh, to share that as well. Now, I'd like to introduce Heather Dooley, Education Coordinator for the National Liberty Museum, to the podium to continue our awards um, presentations. Please join me on stage. So Alexa Jo has completed her senior year at John W. Hallahan Catholic Girls School. She was nominated by her student council moderator, Kathleen Sharp, who worked with her throughout Alexa's high school career. Alexa has been an editor and photographer for her school yearbook. It was quite an extensive high school career here. Um, she's been a student council representative. She served as student council vice president this past school year. She volunteers for school events, including the Archbishop's Christmas Party and Terry Schiavo Life and Hope Gala, and she's also a dancer. Dancing is something that Alexa loves and is good at, and her lifestyle is part of who she is. Um, 
So all of this made it really hard for her two years ago when she was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, which is an inflammatory bowel disease and can cause a lot of pain and can limit a person's daily activities. So suddenly, Alexa's in a situation where she's uncertain about her future. Would she still be able to do the things that she loves? Alexa did keep up her busy lifestyle as much as she could, but she has also allowed her new circumstances to teach her new things. With her strong sense of purpose, Alexa looked at her new situation, a situation that she didn't ask for, in a very positive way. She says, while my circumstances have been my reality, they have not become my perspective on life. I'm grateful every day, and I am committed to find a cure for all of us. Alexa's diagnosis led her to become a fundraiser and spokesperson for the cause, and she was named the 2016 Young Honored Hero by the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation of America. As a result of the time she has spent in the hospital, Alexa has been inspired to become a nurse. She starts college this fall, congratulations, and she will continue to raise awareness and funds toward a cure, while her chosen career path will allow her to help others who are suffering. Alexa. will take you anywhere you want to go. We appreciate your commitment to helping others along the way, and we're very proud to present you with the Young Heroes Award. <laughs> Up next, will Kia Mahutian join me on stage? into science, technology, and math school in New York City. He uses filmmaking to tell stories that are important to him, and it was sort of a happy coincidence that four of our winners happen to be filmmakers, so hopefully we'll see more of that in the future as young people are finding uh, ways to express themselves. His latest film, Living History, interviewing veterans at my local senior recreation center, has been selected by the New York City Parks and Recreation Department to be shown to teens in the filmmaking programs it sponsors. The idea is to encourage them to use their talents for the betterment of their communities. That's what Kia does with all of his films, some of which are already award-winning. He was motivated to make his latest film when his grandfather passed away. Kia's grandfather was a lieutenant commander in the U.S. Navy, and his passing moved Kia to want to preserve the stories of other World War II and Korean War veterans. He felt that they had so much more to offer than what is written in textbooks. So he wanted to help facilitate the passing on of their knowledge to his own generation. Let's watch a clip from the documentary. Most of the soldiers that are buried there, the ages run from 18 to 20. That's all. And when you look at the crosses, there's no end to the crosses there. And when you see that, you realize that we should never have another war. Please, not another war. Kia met with World War II veterans at the Fort Hamilton Senior Recreation Center in Brooklyn to conduct these interviews. That center's director, Mr. Peter Lovett, is actually in the audience today and has been a great role model and supporter of Kia's work. Kia is a very busy person. He's on the debate team at school and the Model United Nations, as well as inspiring other young, young filmmakers through the High Definition Film Production Club. He's currently making a documentary for the Expanded Horizons College Preparatory Program, and his short film, Living History, that we just saw a clip from, will be submitted to the Veterans History Project at the Library of Congress. Kia, it is our great honor to present you today with the Young Heroes Award. Thank you. Skyping with Helen or FaceTiming maybe? Am I so 
myself. If so, hi Helen, you're out there seeing her. Um, Helen Everbach has completed her junior year at Strathaven High School in Wallingsford, Pennsylvania. Her teacher, Ms. Paris, says that people often describe Helen as being, quote, ahead of her time. But Ms. Paris says no, Helen is right on time because our world needs her voice, her experience, and her passion for social justice. Helen is both an exemplary student leader at Strathaven High School and a young playwright. She's an active co-leader of the Diversity Trainers. That's a group of dedicated high school students who teach younger peers what it means to treat others with respect. They do that through awareness and sensitivity training that they lead at the district's middle school. So it's the older students teaching the younger students, passing it on. Having the interpersonal and intellectual skills to get students engaged in conversations around race, class, gender, sexual orientation, mental health, and disability has made Helen a highly effective peer educator. Helen has expressed her passion for working with issues of gender and sexuality, and she plans to become a therapist. She wants to help others find their way. <coughs> draw on her own personal experience. Dealing with her own challenges after coming out in seventh grade has helped to make Helen a strong ally to the transgender community and an outspoken advocate for LGBTQ rights. Helen's most recent play, Losing Back the Sleep You Gained, portrays the supportive relationships within an eccentric LGBTQ friend group and touches on themes of mental health as well. It was produced as part of the Philadelphia Young Playwrights Festival in May 2016. The play's director, David O'Connor, says that Helen's play empowers youth and creates a new normal by featuring young people who are questioning the values they have been handed and they're not depicted as foolish or naive for doing so. Perfect for today's event. Helen, wherever you are out there, uh, for your clear and compassionate leadership and the example you set, we are honored to present you with the Young Heroes Award. And Sherry, we thank you for being here to accept on Helen's behalf. <laughs> Will Alexandra Jackman please join me? Westfield High School in Westfield, New Jersey. She was nominated by her mentor, Adrian Robertiello. Just to give you some background, when Alexandra was 10, she started to notice that many of her peers tended to ignore people with autism in her school and community. She thought about why that could be, and she thought maybe they were unsure what to say. She thought maybe they needed some more information. So Alexandra got involved in the disability community in her area, and she started to learn about autism. She noticed that sometimes people tended to do things for people with autism rather than with them, and she thought she could help change that by facilitating communication between people with autism and those without. Fast forward to middle school, Alexandra had learned quite a lot. At age 13, she made a short documentary entitled A Teen's Guide to Understanding and Communicating with People with Autism. You should watch the whole thing when you have a chance, as with all of these films, they're all incredible, um, and you'll cry a lot for all of them. Uh, the purpose of this film is to bridge gaps in understanding among her peers and to motivate them to bridge those gaps themselves. Let's watch a short clip. Being autistic is not them. It's not who they are. It's what they have and the way their brain is different. They're a person with Asperger's, a person with Rett syndrome, a person with pervasive developmental disorder. Each individual has a personality and likes and dislikes and favorite food. And some love bugs or parrots or cupcakes. Some love Michael Jackson just like someone without autism. And each person is a person, and people are interesting, people are funny, and people are worth the effort. If I could give you a tagline for the Young Heroes, which I guess I can, because it's our program. Um, you can also come here with a tagline. I, I think people are worth the effort is just a great summary of kind of what we're doing here today. Um, that film was three years ago. Uh, now 16, Alexandra speaks to thousands of students and organizations annually. In her school, she started a club to promote inclusion and friendship among people all along the disability spectrum. Her short film that we just saw a clip from has been used as an anti-bullying tool to train teachers, counselors, and students. It has been viewed worldwide through inclusion in film festivals and other channels, and a Spanish version has recently been released. Alexandra, we commend your dedication and your ability to help us see through other people's eyes. You are a very skillful teacher and filmmaker, and we definitely expect big things from you in the future. 
We are honored to present you with the Young Heroes Award. to uh, welcome back commercial market president Tom Shoemaker back to the podium. Schools to unlock their own potential. 
obviously incredibly deserving. Congratulations. the end of our amazing program today. As always, inspired, moved, and just makes you want to be a better person just seeing the people that are here today doing the amazing things, the remarkable things that, that you all have done. And for all the family and parents and mentors out there who are supporting these young people, we thank you for that. And we also, again, want to thank the TV Band team for their generous sponsorship of this program. Clearly, that comes not only from doing the right thing, but it comes from the heart. Personal congratulations to all the winners, their nominators, guests, and family members. Thank you for coming. We want to also mention that for all of you winners out there, we're going to ask you to come up here, I think, to the stage for a photo up. And with that, we want to thank you. Go on and continue to do the great things that you do. the young heroes to go ahead and stay in this room. Uh